Hello, everybody. Once again, welcome back to Soulstorm LP. I'm, of course, a game operator and narrator, Soul. Welcome to the Pegasus Expedition. This game, currently $20 Canadian on Steam, seems pretty interesting to me. Uh, it's been an awful long time since I've actually played anything close to a visual novel. And if you mix the visual novel and a little bit of sci-fi into, um, into the mixture, well... Probably going to pique my interest a little bit. That being said, I've been trying to stay away as much as I can from watching anyone else play the Pegasus Expedition. But I will 100% blame Splattercat for uh, bringing this to my attention. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and hit the new game and see how well we do. Difficulty. Uh, we're going we're gonna to stay on normal, I think. A multiplier, we're going to stay... I think we're. I think for the first run here, I think we're going to stay well within the recommended settings. Yes, yes. I think recommended settings is going to be the best. Let's go ahead and give this a whirl, shall we? Now I've seen the first little bit here. Oh, we'll just sit back for the. In 2262, humanity was at war. A huge, sentient, and hostile life form known as the Colossals was threatening Earth leaving humanity with little choice but to start seeking refuge elsewhere. The Pegasus Expedition was the attempt to achieve that. Three powers from Earth sent their best fleets on the expedition, the rest focusing on defending Earth until the expedition would return. The Zeus Link Fleet, sent by the European Union, has been put under your command, Director. It is now up to you make a difference. Grand Admiral El Holy Peron. Oh. Soldiers, colleagues, you all know very well why we are here and what we are about to do soon. First, remember this moment and remember the stakes. We will risk ourselves on behalf of everything you care about, and everyone you ever knew. And when the time comes, you will be troubled. You will doubt. We all will. At that very moment, remember this. Do your best, do what you can, and it will be enough. It will be enough if anything in our power can be. There's no telling how this is going to end. But in the end, one thing will be certain. That we gave it all we had. Slightly ominous, not too bad. Selecting and moving fleets. You can select a fleet by left-clicking its icon in the star map or its card below. Hold control to select all fleets pres uh, present and shift to add or remove from your selection. Move your selected fleets along the lanes between the stars by right-clicking on a nearby star system. Each fleet has two movement points that it regains at the start of each turn. Traveling across an intersection costs an additional movement point. All right. I'm going to zoom in. We got some WASD. We do. Lovely. So there's the Portal of the Soul. So obviously that's going to be our fallback position. Which is nice. What do we have here? We can enter this system. We can do none of these things. We must select the fleet. Move your unit at high speed between faraway places. You have to make a few preparations first to build our supply network. Use transit stations to connect two systems and upgrade endpoints to supply hubs. The supply network uses energy to operate. The used amount scales with the energy we produce. So this is going to be right here. Yes. This moving between places also consumes a great amount of energy. Fast travel can be used only if the energy cost can be paid. Move orders longer than the usual travel distance are converted to fast travel moves with your confirmation if possible and will be only carried out after you confirm them. Yep. Cool. Even Locke. Welcome to the Beckett's Galaxy, Director. The Pegasus Expedition has now officially begun. A perimeter around the portal has been formed and the main force is being moved through. So far, it's all going according to plan, you could say. 
Cool. Um, so how detailed a plan do we actually have? Well, the level of intel we had beforehand was very limited at best. Yes, we could have made a detailed plan, but without the relevant info, it would be pretty useless from square one. So we really did just jump into the unknown. Oh, yeah, that's fair. If you had better ideas for the plan, you could have brought it up a little earlier. Though it's not like anyone would have listened. It's just the main critique that was thrown around back home. It's not like they're actually wrong. Well, maybe not, but this is still the best we can do. Alright, so I guess uh, we're the spearhead of the expedition, then. Yes, and our allies will follow through shortly. But our readiness was deemed the highest. We just packed the hardest punch, honestly. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, quite possibly. The World Emergency Con Conference decided that it's us, the first expeditionary fleet of the U.S., and Al Mustar's fleet of the Daris Combine, that will participate. Hope I said that right. Al Mustar Mara. Yeah, well, what about the rest of the world? And we couldn't pull all our forces from Earth. The Colossals will reach it in less than five years unless we slow them down somehow. The losses of the Chinese fleet suffered in our attempt to defend the Nova Brun colony were high. Nova Brun? Two years wasn't enough time to patch them up. I saw that firsthand. It was pretty rough. But now they'll just jump in front of the truck again and hope it helps. Yes. Oh. Ooh, okay, that's rough. <laughs> it's not the nicest task. They're buying us time no matter the cost. Simple as that. Alright, uh, what now? Right now, we can't stay around the portal for long, so we need to move into the closest star system to form up. Yes, our recon units are already approaching the Zocket system. In there, we gotta set up some infrastructure, assess our surroundings, and make ourselves... permanent. My teams are still on the other side. Once they've come through and set themselves up, we'll start making sense of all the information we should be already collecting. Oh, we are. Don't you worry, Dr. Lorenz. That does leave the question of dividing the initial systems between us and our allies. I presume the logistics would demand that. Uh, Grand Admiral Perron, Director, sorry to interrupt, but we've got an urgent transmission from the recon units in the Zaka system. Well, what is it about? This is a rather important meeting we have. I know, ma'am, but it's, uh, it's that they've made contact. Oh, that's fine. It took nine hours. Nine hours in the Pegasus Galaxy, and we were at war. They didn't fire warning shots. And we... We weren't going to take it lying down. Uh-oh. What do we got? We got some combat strategies. Before the battle, you can choose a strategy. Start by choosing the frontal assault strategy. So what do we got? A fast, brutal, and reckless focused assault to the heart of the enemy system with the aim of crippling their command. This is one battle group, combat modifiers, plus 30% damage and minus 25% damage reduction, and a 15% retreat threshold. Okay. Affects the top bars. Gotcha. Battle Groups. The fleets are now using the Frontal Assault strategy, but have formed into Battle Groups based on that strategy. Now switch to the Hunting Detachment strategy and see its effect on the Battle Group. Alright. It is recommended to review different strategies to find the best one for the current battle. Switch to Lightning Strike to see its effect on the Battle Group and Attack Groups. And then we can start the battle. We have now chosen the Lightning Strike strategy. Our troops are ready to proceed with the plan. To begin, press Start Combat. This is still a tutorial, so I can't actually change anything. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Oh, this is a missile salvo. Okay, firing missile. Was this nukes? This is nukes. Ah, uh, do I want to use nukes? Yeah, not really. No need. Oh, we got roughed up. That's not good. <laughs> yeah, uh, disconcerting. 
So, uh, what the hell's going on there? <laughs> We've made contact with something. It appears sentient, perhaps somewhat humanoid, and operates heavily armed space vessels. They fired on sight, and we returned fire. We destroyed a small unit in the Zoka system, probably a garrison. So, whatever they are, we are now at war with them? <laughs> What would you do if an unidentified fleet appeared out of nowhere in your star system? They must be terrified right now. I just hope it didn't start something irreversible. Well, it is unfortunate, but I do not see how we could have done things anything differently. Ah, uh, well, right off the bat, you could say we couldn't, eh. We could not have shot back and first contacts like this are probably always a little tense. We could have not shot back, but we're talking about many hundreds of crew members on our ships. I don't think we could have ordered them to just sit and get shot to pieces. We could have. But I don't think we could have made anyone fall that order. So what now? I still don't have my people here, though I would like to send a team to investigate the remains in this Zoka system. You do that when you can, Dr. Lorenz. In any case, the Zoka system is now secure, and we need to move in and start setting ourselves up as soon as possible. That hasn't changed. All right, so what do we got? End turn. All right. A couple things kicking off around us. Additional empires. Now there's a first expeditionary fleet over here. Turn two. Chapter 1 The Shiny New Horizon This was it. We were here with very limited time and nearly endless pressure from home. For better or worse, this was our final plan. We would soon get to see how it would play out. I'm going to say it's not playing out very well right now. Just a guess. A little tingle in my my chest, you know. Kind of got that gut feeling. Sir, our allies have now started moving through the portal and occupying the nearby star systems. Yeah, very good. So, well, we've now surveyed the Zaka system, and it's not exactly a paradise. Unfortunately not. The planets we have are either toxic, unstable, overly hot, radioactive... Ah, uh, yeah, I think we get the picture. We need a foothold, pleasant or not. The second wave is almost ready to move, and we should immediately send them to occupy further systems. That means actively causing more conflict with the new civilization we've met. It does. We need some territory, and they haven't even mounted a retaliatory attack. One could say that they appear kind of weak, a state we should perhaps take advantage of. And having some depth in our defenses wouldn't hurt either. That's true, it certainly wouldn't. So, Director, the second wave is ready and awaiting your orders. Hmm. Very well. Give them the go-ahead. Oh. Uh, cool. When multiple fleets are in combat, both sides pick one to send to battle. If the attacker loses, the losing fleet is removed from the selection, marked with a skull icon, and both sides pick a new fleet for combat. If the attacker is victorious, the defender must retreat. Any fleets that can't retreat are lost. Oh, cool. Understood. Click here to flee from the conflict. If there's nowhere near to, f uh, nowhere to flee to, your fleets are destroyed instead. Can we do some quick start if we wanted to for auto? I hear that's not exactly a good option, though. I hear it's a little bit buggy. I haven't tried it in the full, in the full game. To be honest, I don't think I want to try out if I can avoid it. Spread out combat. So when the enemy system has a large number of defensive stations, choosing more spread out strategies like lightning strike or hunting detachments can destroy them before they can cause much damage to your fleet. Understood. All right. So where are you guys at? You're somewhere. Hmm. If we get hunting detachments, we can 
potentially move guys around. Well, I can swing this around. All right. How about... Yeah. Or... Okay, so I'm guessing these little single glow darts... Glow darts, glow dots on the screen here are probably defensive stations, so I think... We smash those. What is three? Three is first right flank. Five. Can I hide you? I can. All right, so one is going to be our main frontal group. I would like one to come in here. I would very much like to get all these stations. Two and four. First left and second left. There is not a whole lot there. Ships. We've got Ajax, Hornet. Well, we got some, some tanks. These cruisers, frigates. Yeah, maybe that might be a good option. Let's try it. Let her buck. Bring him in. Take down these defensive stations, see if we can hit him all at once. Not quite. Some rounds coming out, a group. <laughs> Do not like. I really don't like. Oh, we are winning this one. But we'll drop some more missiles that way just in case. Now nah, we're losing. That's not good. They're kind of tipping it back and forth. With our missile launches. That's fine. Uh, can we pull it out? Maybe? Getting awful close to those, uh, those lines there. I don't know about that one. Come on. Come on. Hang on for a little bit longer there, guys. There we go. Right down to the wire. There we go. Capturing a system. If a fleet wins a conflict while attacking, it neutralizes the system. It will be captured if the system can be held for a turn, after which that faction can build in that system. Understood. Ugh. That was a little rough. Took control of that system. Perfect. Our... Fleets were victorious, but at what cost? Ooh. Like that's Okay, so that's a garrison fleet. So these garrison fleets I think are automatic. Hmm. Can't enter any system. I can't do anything at the moment. That's command beacon. Upgrades from Command Beacon can be upgraded to Fleet Command Complex. That takes a fair bit of resources. Unlocks outpost of station construction in the star system. Provides five defensive stations capable of launching interplanetary missiles in combat. And upkeeps a level two garrison fleet. Garrison fleets are local defense forces that are repaired automatically. Hmm. That might actually be not that bad of an idea to get these things built here. Be, I can build two. Oh, I got me a lot of resources. I can build a lot. All right, let's build all this stuff. And you, sir, 
down here. Might as well see if we can take this system. Give it a fight. Tight defense formation. System defenders have grouped together in a defensive formation. You should try attacking with a concentrated force to deny them the local numerical advantage they're aiming for. Copy that. Mm. So if I were to wedge it... The full frontal. Lamb these guys. They're already damaged. I don't know who's what, though. Who's group three? I can't tell. Screw it. Let's hit them. Well, I chose decently enough. Looks like they are trying to send on over there. We're going to nuke them. Screw that. Get out of here. All right. Heavy artillery. That's a retreat order. Don't want to give that. This is actually going quite handily, I think. And we took them. What are you guys doing? Slow down. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, another fight, eh? This one. Ooh, that's a little tighter. I would almost say we might have to flee this one. Mm. What do we got? Tier 1 unit damage. Increases the damage of units by 5%. And increases the damage of your flagships by 10%. What do they got? Scepter damage. Increases the damage of the carriers. Increases the damage of the frigates by 10%. Holy cow. Okay. Increases damage of artillery and damage reduction. Ooh. Ooh, so don't like this one. 45. But if I can't retreat, you're dead. Four artillery ships. Two nukes. Let's fight it. Against the odd. The enemy outnumbers us. You should use one of your all means allowed strategies to even our odds in our favor. And the galactic reputation. So this is a galactic reputation indicates how the factions of the Pegasus Galaxy currently views us. Although using all means allowed strategies and strategic weapons are strong options to win battles, their usage will deteriorate our reputation and can lead to other factions using those same means against us. Alright, we're a little off the diplomatic side already. That's not good. They outnumber us. I actually think a frontal assault might be the better option. If for no other reason that we get the option to potentially put some artillery on the other battle group before it gets to us. Bunch of interceptors. I think we got the health to tank it. Maybe. Mm. We do increase damage, but we take more damage in return. Do staged assault. Increases our damage. With no real downside. 
victory at any cost. That's uh, that's a lot of extra casualties there, but no retreat. Ooh, I don't think about that one. Lightning strike. Not really much use here. It would tie up. It was four, three, and five. Freeze the strike group. Yeah. Might have to dogpile them. Try it. Group one, group two, which one we land on. We get our nukes and our missiles out early. All the nukes, get out of here. Well, that's our nukes spent. And they're not actually running over to join us. That's decent, I guess. Man, are we taking some hits. Uncontested, eh? Down to 20% yet? Almost. Well, victory's ours, but... Hmm... So, now that we have a bit more than the Zoka system Dr. Lorenz so passionately dislikes, we should do something useful with them. I just dislike the inhospitable uh, planetary features, Miss Yurik. Yep, so if you don't mind, Director, I'd like to show you the plans we've made to make the best use of these few star systems. Since there won't be a second chance, it's important that we get this right the first time. So please see to it, sir. Very well, Carolina. Let's go. Ah, so now we get to build stuff. All right. What do we got here? Build an outpost. So, founding an outpost, click on an outpost card below to find the new outpost. Each outpost type contains different structures that are shown as small icons of the corresponding card. Hover over a building's icon to see its details. This is science, industry, and shipyard. Hmm. Can I back out? Because I didn't actually see what uh, this had. It's barren, but rare earth rich. Uh, industrial complex that extracts minerals and a small amount of rare earth for building ships and infrastructure. Well, if this is rare earth rich, I think obviously this is going to be the better one. Produces 12 rare earth a turn. 60 minerals a turn. And generates plus power, but six people. Structure time. Understood. Yes. Uh, tiers of habitation. There are three levels of habitation we can have on planets and moons. An outpost, a settlement, and a colony. Outposts are the most common. It can be built almost anywhere. Settlements can only be built on planets or moons that can properly support human life on some level, making them harder to find. Settlements can have much more specialized buildings and produce a much larger resource income than the outpost would, once properly developed. Colonies can be built on planets or moons that are fully capable of supporting human life. They're exceedingly rare in the Pegasus Galaxy, but enable us to construct vast facilities for our benefit. Alright, so I think we got good. Nice. Okay, rare earth. You betcha. 100% increase. What are you? Rocky alien ruins, toxic atmosphere. So we can build science here. Can't build anything larger than an outpost. At all. But we can build a research station. Alright, and how about you? What do we got? Volcanic, which increases mineral extraction by 25%, and rare earth extraction by 50%. Uh, touchy communications. Corrosive, so nothing bigger than an outpost. 
Again, nothing bigger than an outpost. But let's go ahead and do some more mining. Hmm. And we can't build anything on the hazardous planets. Well, that's a shame. Can I return to the star map? I can build structures. Okay, cool. Build different non-civilian outposts. Oh my god. I have to build one that's... Ah. Boo. That's science, that's minerals. What are you guys? I rebuild this. Come on. I don't want just a civilian outpost. Not here. 75, 9, and 6. This is more rare earth. Well, maybe I'll go to the, the lava planet here and just build a shipyard. How's that sound? There. Is everybody happy now? Box tells you what resources the selected system is producing right now and shows the system's governor's traits when has been recruited here. And we can exit the system view now. So we're getting 60 minerals, 12 earth, 25 science, and 50 power. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. How about you? What can you build? And we got desert world, alien ruins, rare earth veins, and no atmosphere. Decreases our total energy production here by 25%. Eh, it is what it is. And we can actually build some rare earth. Not really a whole lot. Minus 25 socks. But that's okay. We will balance that out. And what are you? We can get science here. How about the toxic atmosphere? Is that science as well? We can. Now it comes down to which is better. Hmm. Can't really tell if anything's much better, actually. It's 25 science. And this is 25 science. So I'm going to say... Still rare earth rich. This is alien runes, though. I'm going to say science here. Just because it's alien runes. And I put industry here on the toxic, on the toxic planet. Yeah. So we've already built here. And I kind of want to go back in here and change this up. Do I? Hmm. Yeah, we'll leave it for now. And you, what is buildable here? There's a lot of planets here. Not really a whole lot that's buildable, though. You have extreme day-night cycle, no atmosphere, and low gravitational pull. Decreases our energy here by 25%. Mm. Is there anything worth building here? Aside from a shipyard, so we can go back and uh, put something else on the uh, the volcanic planet, maybe? What else is here in the system? Ship graveyard increases minerals. Plus more to build. However... Increase science production by 50% here. Oh, that's still minus 70 power. 
How about you? What are you? Rare Earth here. And you? Unnatural Beauty. Again, everything seems to be knocking power generation down a fair bit. Hmm. More science. More science! Oh, am I out of resources? That's negative 75 here. Or am I just out of people? I might actually be out of people. Not enough resources. Boo. Well, we did what we could. Take control of two systems and won both uh won both of our battles. I think that's pretty good. I'll end this and see what happens. Please don't be too mad with me. <laughs> ah, sir, the leaderships of the first expeditionary fleet at Almos tomorrow have established themselves here. Nice. And the VK and Shioko. Shioko systems, respectively. And they would like to discuss the situation. They've called the first meeting of the Earth War Council, or ED EWC for short. It is an assembly of the military leaders of the fleet. Yeah, cool. Can I go? Can I go? Technically speaking, you're not military, sir. The EWC doesn't represent our command structure perfectly, but its structure is essentially precisely what the whole body is for. A compromise. I'll maintain a connection with you throughout the meeting. We are not making any decision without your approval, so you don't need to worry about that. Ah, so are we ready to send Grand Admiral Perron there? Is it Perron or Ferron? Hmm. Yes, I hope this EWC will prove to be... Excuse me, prove it to be useful. Oh, jeez, excuse me. I really do, too. Welcome, colleagues, to the first meeting of the Earth War Council. Representing Al Mustamara of the Diarist Combine, Admiral Gretel Madan at your service. Admiral Samuel Reed of the First Expeditionary Fleet. Good to meet you. I'm Grand Admiral Elodie pa I am so terrible with French names, Elodie pa uh, Farron of the Zeus Link Fleet. I'm the ranking military officer, but not the highest authority in the fleet. Yes, I've heard of your interest in command structure. Shouldn't soldiers lead this kind of a military expedition? The military part isn't the whole truth, Admiral Reed. And perhaps not. But we've certainly found ourselves fighting for every planet and star. We've read the reports of your first contact for all. Not ideal, but hard to avoid. Whatever they are, we've hit a soft spot. I would even call it ideal. Based on the bits and pieces we managed to translate, we're fighting a political entity called the Roar Clan, which is part of a much larger civilization called the Male Stickrath. Oh, back to the names, back to Stellaris nightmares again. So how do the rest of them view us? We haven't made contact with other clans of theirs. This is all based on the information we've gained from a rather sizable Male Stickrath population, the Shioko system. That's even better. If they want to defend this Roar clan, they'd already be here. So there's nothing stopping us from taking over everything they have. Ah, uh, that feels a little excessive. Our needs are excessive as well. We didn't come here to play. Does the Zeus Link fleet have a stance on this issue? Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Uh, we can upgrade this. That's still working on it. They're all still working on getting their stations up and running. What is here? Not really a whole lot of anything. Extreme radiation. We can't build anything on it anyways, so... I guess that makes it super easy as to what we need to focus on next. And we do have some buildable for rare earth veins. Obviously, we're going to get some more rare earth rolling on that one. Are you hollow and high gravitational pull? Mm. And not enough resources again. Again, I think that's down to people. We are, after all, still building. Yep, Roar Clan is hostile to us. Ooh, we got power plants up and running. Zaka. What do we got? What is operating? We have an industrial outpost up and running. We do have power plants up. We have some power coming in. That's a lot of power coming in. Holy crap. Plus 767. Yeesh. Uh, expanding the fleet cards. All right. This will gives us access to our units and access to equipment as well as flagships, which are replaced if they are destroyed. Cool. And we can disband here. Do not touch. What do we got for equipment? Line ship reinforcement kit. Increases the damage and damage reduction of all cruisers and frigates by 10%. Increases the damage and damage reduction of all carriers and artillery by 10%. Battle group coordination. Increases the damage and damage reduction of all units by 5%. And flagship reinforcement is focusing strictly on the flagship. That's not bad. Hmm. What have we got in the fleet? We're missing stuff. The frigates. These are our harriers. Eagles are our cruisers. And a couple of carriers. A couple of pieces of artillery. What's better? I can't build anything yet. Hold on. We got three types of cruisers. Three types of carriers. Yes. And three types of artillery. Okay, this cataclysm piece of artillery seems pretty nice. I'm guessing the top row is the cream of the crop. Bronze, silver, gold, you betcha. Hmm. Neat. Yeah, I still don't have any... Can I exit? Can I minimize? How do you minimize? Alright, there we go. Uh, so I still don't have any income as of yet, so we're going to hold off on that for a hot second. <laughs> oh. oh no, <laughs> oh no. Um. Uh oh. Rump, rump. We might have to hold... I'm going to hold these guys off. Yeah. Would it be better to retreat? Mm. What do I even have for defensive platforms? Not much. You know what? I think we gotta retreat. Fall back, hold the line elsewhere. Or it's a little easier. Sir, there's something we seriously need to discuss. <laughs> really? What is it? This is what's going on. We don't have a place to settle people in meaningful numbers. And we have and to have any facilities of larger scale, we need people to man them. So we need some place for to settle the first big wave of people. We've identified a single such plan in one of the systems controlled by this Roar clan. It might be a good idea to grab it while they're the only ones hostile to us. 
Yes, it's the bow system not far from our current borders. Unfortunately, there aren't any sensible alternatives. So if we ever want to set up anything proper here, we need that place. And we need it soon. The rural resistance has been resilient at times, but hardly very concentrated. Occupying this bow system shouldn't be too much of a challenge. We are really beating this Roar Clan to the ground, aren't we? If they're letting us do it, then gladly. Well, it's not exactly self-defense anymore, that's just for sure. Ah, uh, may cause trouble later, but right now we need bow, just like you said. Well, if you let me draw your attention to some less hypothetical matters, I would like to inform you that my research teams have finally set themselves up and are ready to fill in designated tasks. <laughs> well, if you let me draw your attention to some less hypothetical matters, I'd like to inform you that... Okay, that's twice. Uh, which basically means wherever we or you would like to direct them to research. And there are many lucrative options, if I may show you. Well, go ahead, Dr. Lorenz. So we can research technologies by opening the screen here. All right. We have Zeus Link. The extent of the Zeus Link's technological prowess leading up to the Pegasus Expedition. And this allows us to unlock the Pegasus Habitation Protocol. Allows us to construct settlements. All right, well, we have to obviously unlock that one first. Increases energy production power plants by five. Increases the damage of all units by 10%. That might be a really good idea. Increases the unit production speed of shipyards by 100%. And unlocks the Hermes radar array equipment. Allows you to see fleets in neighboring nebula star systems. Not bad. Ah, I saw that. Increases mineral production by five. That's just base minerals, yes? And this upgrades everything else. Ooh, this might be a better option right off the bat. Run up this way and then start working on everything else. Yes. Okay, so we must capture Bo. Bo's down this way. Well, we're running into a little bit of some problems. Just a few. Expand a new capture system with new outposts. We need more minerals to produce ships and buildings of rare earth for more advanced equipment and science to improve our forces and buildings. We can auto build, which allows AI to go ahead and build the structures for us. Might not be a bad idea. Uh, at some point in the future. This requires our command station to be built, which we don't have yet. Mm. Well, not much we can do then. I was really hoping to maybe build some defensive stations there, but uh, that don't seem to be a thing. Meanwhile, there's a lot of ships here. Um, and we don't have a whole lot of anything here for defense. Can I repair you? Can't move for two turns, and it costs 371 min- Oh my goodness. May have lost control, but that's fine. Those fleets are not exactly getting any smaller. Well, the garrison fleet's in a good position. Man, I would like to repair you, but you are so darn expensive. I still don't have my mines up and running. Woof. Woof. Big woof. I don't know. Maybe I should have fought? We can now produce more fleets and ships to fill them with. You should try to maintain a good amount of cruisers or frigates as frontline forces, and then consider adding some artillery and carriers to support them. Energy consumption is too high. Build more energy production facilities or demolish structures or fleets that consume energy. When energy is below zero, happiness decreases greatly. Well, I went from like 700 energy con uh, production to zero. So that's nice. Mm. 
You're building mines. Hmm. I would love this. What technology required for civilian outposts? What are you? Yeah, I still need uh, one more turn, I think. Generating 102 science. We'll take the hit. Maybe. Maybe we'll take the hit. I think everything else has been built. Fleet base has been built. That's all been built. Labs are up and running. And you've all been built as well. I guess the next thing to keep in mind, an eye out for is going to be potentially building some of these. Valid start type. How about solar? Requires solar harvesters tech. I know I saw you somewhere around here. Right there. Yeah. That is a long ways away. Boo boo. Boo boo boo. I don't have anything buildable on you. Stream day night cycle. Decreases our total energy production here by 25%. This is not ideal what I would like. That's up and running. That's up and running. I need the I need that uh I need that science. I needs it. I need my settlement so I get some power generation up and running. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Settlement and colonies. Some systems are suitable enough to make settlements or even colonies on. These are the most valuable systems to acquire because they allow us to construct our most advanced units and resource production buildings. To upgrade our outposts to the settlements, you should hire a governor to oversee the settlement. Understood. What is actually here at Gekoa? Mm. One planet. One planet only. Could I smash and take it? Potentially. The same way I could smash and take this. Twenty forty-five and thirty-three. Eh, not really. <laughs> You're in dire need of some repairs here, son. Holy cow. Uh, let's have a look at the fleet. Well, I'm going to get you set. Yep. We're down 50 power. Ugh. You have buildable here. Civilian, civilian. It's not ideal because of the minus... The, the, the drop in power, but I think we have to build something. Don't have enough resources anyways, so... Yeah, cool. That's nice. Well, ain't that just awesome. We're getting 51 rare earth metals a turn. That is already going to be very expensive. Let's rock it. Hmm. We got three groups all set up. I want 
to do hunting strategy. Oh, dang. That's three and five. I want main battle group to go. Do everybody out? Eh, not really. Maybe frontal assault. Them real hard here. Looks like they're holding the line to the last man. Start. That's hit her. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna hit the. Uh, probably gonna hit the next group over here shortly. Here, have some nukes. Get out of here! Get! Run away! Leave! Be gone! Now we're gonna speed this up a little bit. We do have this in the bag, it just all depends how much damage we're gonna take in the meantime. I got a couple ships down, not good. All that for a system I don't even like. Boo. Boo, indeed. They're very expensive to repair all of a sudden. That's so what have we got. We got cruisers, carriers, frigates. Three artilleries, two carriers, a lot of cruisers. Well, that will grab that as well. And we are making 300 a run. Why not? Make this fleet of terror. Even in its weakened state. We do a fast repair for two turns. Expensive. Oof. That's okay. Eighteen, I don't have enough minerals. Oh, that's why. Okay. All right. Science is done. What do we need? What do we get? Well, stuff repair protocol is actually kind of nice if we can repair 10% for free. That's going to be something we'll have to worry about next time, though. In the meantime, thank you very much for swinging on by and hanging out with me while I explore the Pegasus Expedition. It's a very interesting game so far. I don't know how well we're going to do in the future, but hey, you know what? Let's see how we do. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Thank you very much for stopping on by. If you like what you saw, hit that like button. If you want to leave a comment, by all means, I greatly appreciate it. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. At the end of the time, have yourself a wonderful evening. I'll chat you later.